Pittsburgh Sports now here live from the new and improved Peterson Event Center. For David Haig behind the camera, this is Zachary Weiss, fresh off of an 81-62 Duquesne win, reclaiming the city game title away from the Pitt Panthers. And from the beginning, it just looked like two different teams that were on the court. Yes, they're in similar spots in a sense. Shorter in depth, a little bit shorter a little bit longer of a leash for those that are playing because there's some injury bugs for both sides. So really it came down to who was going to fire the first punch. And Duquesne absolutely fired the first punch. Amanda Kalen getting an and one play, Duquesne just being more physical in the middle, and just really the loose balls and the one-twos just really went more Duquesne's way. And perhaps it was the motivation because Duquesne did lose the city game a season ago at their own place, which is a sense of pride. Duquesne coming into this one has won eight of the last ten, ten city games, and now you can make it nine for the last eleven. But this was a game that I think both teams wanted to win. They understand the significance of this. There is no men's city game this year. You had Pitt versus Robert Morris instead. So you really look at a lot of those factors, and you can see the importance of what being the best team or considered to be the best team in the city is, and Duquesne was able to fulfill that and check that box off today. You had really, really good performances all around from Duquesne. You had Amaya Hamilton as a freshman tying her her career high in points with 17. You also had her contributing five rebounds. Paige Cannon with a season high nine rebounds. Nina Ajo has been a little bit bitten by the injury bug, but comes back and flirts with a triple double. 11 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and a couple turnovers, but really she was almost flawless. And in the first game back, you can't really ask for much more than that. There were some dicey moments for Duquesne. Pitt really, and credit to them, they did not give up in the game. They cut the deficit down to six points, and then you saw, as they're making the run, the youth show up a little bit. And there was an unfortunate play for Pitt where they're in transition, uh, and wayward pass goes beyond half court, and Pitt kind of settled the ball, settled for the instead of settling for the backcourt violation, where just take the ball, reduce anything happening. You saw Ajo sprint down for the ball, beating the Pitt defender. And from from her uh, from her bottom, she was able to pass the ball over to Amanda Kalen, who was able to make a basket, and Duquesne was set. Then you saw another made basket. You saw an and one opportunity for Kalen, and Pitt immediately was back on the defensive calling timeout. And really, mentally, that was as close as Pitt got. Duquesne pushed it to 20 at, at points in the third quarter, and Pitt was able to counter Deshanette Harris having a career-high game of 22 points today. And you had other good individual efforts, but individual efforts are something that Lance White said. There have been individual efforts but Pitt's very short-handed, just like Duquesne is very short-handed. And you have to have a good team effort, and the team effort just was not there for Pitt today. Just a lot of turnovers, a lot of youth showing ill-advised mistakes, and it cost them dearly today. And for Pitt, it's something where I think there's been a lot of short leashes in between games where there hasn't been enough time to get things right. And Duquesne's kind of been on the road for a lot. This was their first game in the city of Pittsburgh in 18 days, which doesn't seem like much when you're a basketball player that hasn't been playing in a home gym all season. It's a really, really tough statistic. So what have they done? They've made their own noise. Today they had their own crowd. We had over 1,000 fans at the Peterson Event Center today for a women's basketball game at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which is an impressive feat in and of itself. And you had two spirited fan bases and two spirited teams, but quite simply, one team was ready to play for 40 minutes and, and one team was not. And Pitt will have to grow and Pitt will have to learn from this. But as Lance White has said all season, this is a youth movement and sometimes you take the good and you take the bad. And for Pitt, you just have to be patient right now. These teams these teams will get themselves together. Pitt will get themselves together. You, Kyla Nelson, who has had a struggle of an off season just dealing with health, is expected to be back in mid-December. She had her first workout this week, so that's a very, very good sign for Pitt. And you have a couple of tra transfer that's coming in at, at the beginning of the second half of the season, so that's right in time for ACC play. So as players, be, as those bodies come back, Pitt will be able to substitute a little bit more liberally, where they won't have to sub because somebody needs a blow after 10 minutes on the court. There will be some depth and there will be some options to plug and play. For Duquesne, it just continues. They have a game on Tuesday at Oakland Catholic against Central Connecticut State, but this is their first game of their now four-game winning streak inside this, inside the city limits. So they've had to do it on the road. They've had to do it with a couple injuries that could potentially be season-ending injuries. So that's a task in and of itself that's very difficult. But Duquesne, it was a really, really good performance for them, where it was almost a complete 40 minutes. It was a good effort on both ends of the floor. Defensively, were there some lapses? Sure. I think that uh, these are two teams that typically know each other and you see more defensive showdowns, but this was really the opposite. You had two teams that were offensively able to show their potential and defensively might still be searching for that identity. 
Duquesne tried to use more posts and attack more of the zone. They were able to do that. And Duquesne's had had to make some adjustments, and Pitt was largely able to answer that. But with the times that Duquesne broke away, they were able to turn defense into offense and turn a shorter court, and Pitt just wasn't ready to accomplish that. So it's back to the drawing board for Pitt, and to an extent it's back to the drawing board for Duquesne because even despite this winning streak, they actually have a technical home game having to play at Oakland Catholic, which is a very a, just about as close of a game here. It's, it's also in Oakland, so I guess it's their second game in Oakland, but it's going to be a tough task this season for both teams, just trying to get that youth movement, trying to keep players healthy and motivated, but it's clear that both teams are motivated, but it translated into completely different ways, but for this one, the City game this year will go to Duquesne, and for David Haig behind the camera, this is Zachary Weiss signing off for now. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.